Hey, welcome back everybody. This video we are going to be talking about a very common word you'll hear in development and that word is refactoring. So what is refactoring? Well, the primary thing is that refactoring is a way to change your code without changing the functionality of your program. So this is an entirely behind the scenes thing. So why would you want to do this? Why would you want to put effort into changing your code but keeping your app exactly the same? The main there's a couple main reasons. The first one is you might have a a new way to do the code that might be optimized. So for example, you might change an algorithm to a different algorithm that has a, a faster time complexity or a, a lower time complexity, I guess I should say. Or you might want to change code that is sloppy or messy, or you might want to make some new functions, make your code more readable. And those are the two primary reasons you would refactor your code. Basically, you're cleaning up the code base, you're making it better without changing the functionality of your app. Now, generally, what I recommend, before you go and refactor a whole project, you will want to have some kind of tests to verify that your code is working properly. So generally, when you're building a more large application, you're going to have some kind of testing framework or even if you don't have that, you can go in, in a main function and just call a bunch of different functions and verify that they're returning the correct results using if statements. That's like the basis of testing. And the reason you want to do this is because as you change your code base, it's very, very easy to accidentally break other parts of your code without realizing it. So you definitely want to make sure that you have some way to check to verify that your code is working exactly the same. So with that, we're going to be talking about refactoring. And specifically, we're going to be building some functions from some code that could really use some functions. So make sure you watch the previous videos on functions because we talk about how to create functions, how to call them, and everything like that. Now, if you have all that figured out, then you should be good to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to go into one of our older applications, multiarray.c. And in here, if you, uh, if you haven't watched this video, you can code it right now. But basically what we're doing is we have this 2D array and we're going and printing every single value of this array. So if you guys want to see what this runs and what it, what it looks like when, when it runs, it just prints these values exactly like that. And personally, I think this is cool. It's not too crazy complex to read, but I think it'd be much prettier if it just said, hey, print this array and it was a function call. So the way I'm going to break this up is I'm going to break this inner loop as a function and then this outer loop as a function. So let's start with the inner loop. And basically this is just going to print one array, a single dimensional array. And yeah, so let's just get started. And now let's talk about what it's going to take as an argument. Well, in this situation, we're using an integer array. So it's going to take an int array just like that. Now, what are we going to do inside of here? We're going to make a for loop. Okay, now here's where something interesting is. When you pass an array to a function, the size is going to go away, right? So it's not easy to figure out the size. So what we need to do is we need to actually have another uh, parameter here, and that's going to be the size. And when we call it, we need to pass in that size. So as long as this is less than size, it's good to go. And then we're going to increment i. Oops. Erg. There we go. And we're going to basically just print the individual elements of array using the i as the index. All right, let's compile, make sure it's it's okay. It, it, it compiles, so we're good so far. Now that we have this print array function, we should be able to make this code a little bit more readable because we're not gonna need this inner for loop. We can just call our function print array and pass in some data. So what we're gonna need to pass in is we're going to pass in the grades and we're just going to pass in a single bracket, which is how you can just pass one individual row. So if you just want to pass this, for example, then you just use a single bracket and you're going to use I as the index to say which row we want to pass. So the first iteration is going to pass that one. And the second iteration is going to pass that one. And we're also going to need to pass in the length of these, which is the uh, columns. 
so we're going to pass in columns like so. And it seems to be working. Now, if we wanted to, we could um, we could print the new line here or we could print the new line here. I'm gonna print it out here just because I, general, I generally try to leave as much out of the function as possible because we might wanna use this and not print a new line, which would not be possible if we put the new line inside of the function. So I'm just gonna put it here. And there we go, we have the same exact output as before. And we could even go farther and create a function to print a multi-dimensional array or whatever it may be. You can expand this to more complicated things, but we have essentially refactored our code. So we get the same exact output that we did before, but now looking at this, it's much clearer because basically for every row, we want to print that row. Very, very simple to read. So thank you guys for watching. Hopefully this gives you a good understanding of how refactoring works. Appreciate you guys watching and I will see you in the next video.